Marketer of the Day, Episode 583, Beyond the Book, Embark on the Quest for Greatness, Never Stop Marketing, Fight Obscurity, Become Memorable Using an Audio Logo, and Get High-Paying Clients with Trevor Crane. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to the Marketer of the Day podcast. We're here chatting with Trevor Crane, and Trevor is an 11-time number one international best-selling author, and he's the founder of Epic Author Publishing, and Trevor is also the host of the GreatnessQuest.com podcast, and he's the founder of SuperKidsBooks.com, and here's why you're going to want to uh, pay extra close attention to Trevor today. It's because his mission is to help publish 1,000 new authors and help people take their life and their business to the next level, no matter how successful they already are. So Trevor, glad to be talking to you. You too, brother. Hey, that was a good job reading my lengthy bio and you, you took some highlights there and made me sound cool. I really appreciate that. Growing up the son of a horseshoer, I didn't think everybody, anybody would ever say that kind of nice stuff about me. Well, well, cool. I mean, you you wrote it, and I'll say it. I'll, I'll say anything you, you put on the page there. So, so, so yeah. So you're you're an author. You've uh, hit number one all these different times. I mean, what's your secret? How the heck do you do it? So, good question, brother. I, I'll share with you the eleven time number one best selling author thing. Sounds really cool. What I what I think is a a better um, measure of success rather than the flash in the pan in the pan that you get when you get somebody's attention or you become number one for a day rather than showing up on Oprah Winfrey for a day rather than getting your 15 minutes of fame is having a back end to the books having understanding that my books are a, a lead into something else and something greater uh, Robert when I read the no I didn't read it it was Al Gore Al Gore did that video presentation uh, called uh, An Inconvenient Truth. Do you ever hear that movie or watch it or whatever? I've seen clips of it, haven't seen it start to finish, haven't seen the sequel, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. Uh, basically, a PowerPoint presentation turned into a movie, right? You got it. And I was having a, my wife must have been out of town and I was on my own and I must have gone to the library or something and picked up Al Gore, Inconvenient Truth. And I, and I popped it in and I, I'm not exactly an Al Gore fan. That's not what I would call myself. But I was wanting to see this thing because like you, I'd heard of it. I maybe looked at it a bit and I found myself sitting on the edge of my seat and very interested, very interested in this concept of global warming. Like I hope for the, your audience that actually have books, I hope people are into your subject. So I was into the subject and I was excited about it and I thought, you know what, I really want to be part of the solution. I think this is great. I think global warming sucks. This Al Gore guy seems like he kind of knows what he's talking about. And I oh, completely hook, line, and sinker. Like I'm, I'm a marketer, so I'm easily sold. And I'm like, man, you know, I, you got me, man. And then at the end of this presentation, at the end of the movie, it was over. He's like, hey, we're melting the planet. It's a really bad thing. I hope you're all fired up about it. Now let's go do something. And I was like, yeah, well, what are we going to do? And that was it. He's like, there's a big problem. And oftentimes people that are writing their books or need to figure out their marketing or their branding or they're trying to figure out a funnel or whatever it is, or they're like, I want to hit number one, which is what you asked me about is that they don't understand that that's the beginning and not the end. And what I ended up doing was getting pissed off at Al Gore because I went and I thought I was confused. Robert, I thought I was stupid. I was like, uh, did he, did I miss something? Like where he must, I just must be dumb. Where did he tell me what I was supposed to go do? And I looked at the bonus features on the video and I couldn't find an answer. Like, I, and then I, and then I did some Googling and I'm like, what does Al Gore suggest we do about global warming? And what I found out was fucking nothing. Like all I got was, uh, you know, Al Gore drives a Prius, so you should drive a Prius, and um, get fluorescent light bulbs. And all I thought was, screw you, Al Gore. Like, you got me all fired up with no place to go. And I think that bigger than getting to a number one, and we can talk about the hows of that, and I can talk about that in a little bit, the more important part is that you have a back end and you, have a, you, you can take somebody someplace. People buy books to solve problems or get results or be entertained, which is still a result. And then where are you going to take them? Like I like to read non or fiction and, I, and I'll go to an author that has a, a series because I want to hear the next part of the story and I, I want to keep going. Like what's going to happen next I think is the more important part of the – and I know you're a systems guy. So it's the systemization and the forethought of the book and the marketing, whatever it is that you're doing, that there's a back end to it. And and I wish that Al Gore would have given me something like that. I haven't watched his sequel because the first one pissed me off so bad because <laughs> like I didn't have a back end. But it reminds me that when I help my clients write books, 
I'm trying to help them write a book that they're proud of for a decade or more, not a book that they get done in a weekend or that. And a lot of people write books, and I'm sure you've seen this, that they don't know how to use. They don't know how to use in marketing that isn't helping them with their monetization. And all of that help people stuff beyond your book is so much, I think, more important than the fact that I or my clients or you have hit number one at, at any given time, which I think is important. And I love talking about it. But to just brag about that and be like, look at me, I'm so cool. I hit 11 times. Some of those were kids books I did with my daughter. So, th I mean, there you go. One of them is called the uh, the three ninja kitties that my I helped my daughter and I co-authored with my daughter when she was seven years old. So that was one of my eleven. So don't think that I'm, you know, a rocket scientist on this. But I'm guessing, brother, that I'm I'm speaking to the choir to you. But is that making sense? Uh, and, and or do you disagree with me? No, I mean I'm I'm right there with you a hundred percent. That it can it can be really frustrating if someone reads your book. And if it's, if it's digest anything, right, read your book or watches the Al Gore documentary or whatever and says, OK, I read this, but now what? How am I supposed to put it into action? You, you haven't given me any sort of a, a call to action. You haven't told me what to do, where to go. And and yeah, it's making perfect sense because it sounds like where you're coming from is that. It's important to create this movement, right? Sort of like how you have this movement that you're you're getting moving here about getting the 1,000 new authors. So how the heck are you going to start a, a movement of any kind if someone reads your book and you just say, okay, thanks for reading the book. See you around. And there's no sort of uh, telling them what to do and, and where to go. But at the same time, it seems like is this something that – is easily fixed because I'm not sure if it seems like super overwhelming or if it's just a matter of beginning with the end in mind and just knowing knowing what, what the point is, I guess, right? So that way we're not just creating a book with a bunch of weird stuff. So it's a good question. So is this something that everybody can handle today on the show while they're listening to me? Probably. And it's also probably something that people should seek some help with. Because if you're planning your 10-year vision, it's typically not something that comes up in a 30-minute a, a, a podcast uh, in, in the two minutes that you and I are now talking about this one little part of the subject. So beginning with the end in mind is key. Um, if you think about building a house, and I think about this with books specifically, and I think books are a representation of a brand. They are a representation of uh, phenomenal marketing, and it helps my business owners that, uh, and, and entrepreneurs that I work with, that I help with books, get clear about their marketing, their business, and their brand. And I think that they're a phenomenal resource to build that foundation, but you need to build a foundation that has this long tail. Like, what's the long tail? Like, what do you want? People think, I just need to finish this book. I just need to finish this funnel if you're like a foot there's a that's a big word you know these days like oh i need a funnel great oh i need to make some videos great oh i need to do a podcast great now that you've done that now what that's really the question so there's four questions i ask and answer and i'll give these to you now because this might be relevant to any of your audience who have not yet published books or even if you have a book and you're not using it as a powerful marketing tool in fact your most most powerful marketing tool that helps you make money and drive your mission or movement like you just put it brother then these you need to ask and answer so that you understand and i can spend two minutes on this and i can spend a weekend on this and i can spend six months on this question with a potential client working out better and better answers and the questions are really simple number one is uh, is who is this book for? And a lot of times people will write a book or marketing and they'll go, it's for everyone. <laughs> you know, like I want everyone to get this message. And I'm like, well, you're a financial advisor, right? And they're like, yes. And everyone needs this information. I'm like, well, my daughter now is 11. Does she need this information? And they're like, well, uh, sure. Maybe, maybe not now. Okay, maybe not now. I'm like, my father-in-law is in his 70s. Oh, no, no, he needs this because they're assuming that my father-in-law might have a little bit of assets in the management that they could help with. So, but is it for the 18-year-old punk that it, whatever, like you got to be clear who your book is for and then, the, and then who your marketing is for. So that's really key. And these are the four questions, Robert, that I think people can figure out with an existing book or in planning a new one. And if you just get clear about this, you can learn how to use a tool you already have in your toolbox, which might be a book or marketing or video or something that you've got so that you can connect with someone. Be clear about your podcast or video. Who is it for? And if you have not created it yet, God bless you. 
because now you get to carve it out. Is it for Robert who likes it when I use, you know, when I drop F-bombs all over the place? Or maybe you don't. I don't know. But, you know, is it for is it for Jews? Is it for Christians? Is it for little kids? Is it for grandma? Like, who's it for? You can now frame the entire conversation, even around freaking tacos, uh, Tinkerbell, whatever you want to write about, whatever you want to promote. And you can talk about it in the language that they want to hear it. And that's who is very important. Now, the second thing is, what is it about? And if you ask somebody, I'm sure everyone has had this experience. You've been to a networking event and you've met someone and they come up and introduce themselves and they tell you what they do and they shake your hand a lot and they give you their business card and they talk a whole bunch and you see their mouth flap around and you under, and you're like looking around behind you like, how the fuck do I get out of this conversation? <laughs> you know, like, you're like, how do I get out of this guy won't shut up or this gal won't shut up and you have absolutely no idea what they do. You don't know what they do. They don't know what it's about. They just keep going on, blah, blah, blah. You know your business card. You know you want whatever you want. You want to escape from this person who just won't shut the hell up. Oftentimes, we communicate too much and uh, we, we, we are too confusing because we can't simply describe what we do, what our book or our marketing or our message is about in, like, in, in three words. You know, Nike's phrase, just do it. I think was one of the most brilliant marketing campaigns ever because it was three simple words that even a kid could understand. What is your book about? When I was studying uh, from uh, James Patterson, and I took one of his master class, and he was talking about how to, before you write your book, test your marketing, like test whether or not your idea makes sense. Go talk to your ideal audience with who you think is going to be reading your book, and then tell them your idea before you write it and look them in the eyes and see if they understand or they're excited about it or if they don't care. And oftentimes you're listening and you're looking for things they're not saying because if it's your friends and family, they'll blow smoke up your skirt and tell you, oh yeah, that sounds great. Versus talking to your ideal core audience. And this is how I do my marketing, by the way, I'm actually asking, answering part of your first question, which is how do I create a number one bestseller? I don't start by writing the book. I start by talking about the book. I start with marketing, which is communication, which is telling people, hey, this is who I'm writing a book for. This is what it's going to be about. That's the answer to question number two, or at least what I'm seeking. And then question number three, and this is an important one, is why do people care? Why are they going to care about your book, your message, your video, your podcast? What is it? And there's only two things. It's problems and results. Now, maybe entertainment might be another one, so that's cool if you're entertaining and you're writing something you think is cute and fun or funny or factual or whatever, but they're looking to solve problems. The biggest search engine on the planet right now where people go buy stuff is Amazon. They are buyers who are looking to solve problems and deliver results. When you tell somebody about your book or they're looking at your cover or they're looking at your marketing, your message, or your entrepreneurship or whatever your business from home is when you're working on your side hustle, do they understand who it's for? what it's about and why they should care because if they do, if they don't understand the problems that it solves and the and the results that it delivers then they're going to put it fucking down and people are making a decision right now in 2 3 seconds we glance at something and that's how we're making a decision so if it is not communicated in like at like a second grade level then it's too complex Unless you're like targeting people who are PhDs and want to read long-winded white papers and stuff like that then I guess it might be they might give you 7 seconds but it's who, what, why, and the fourth question, which is the most powerful one about beginning with the end in mind of your book, is what's next. And for everybody who already has a book done, or if you're thinking about getting a book done, what's next, I actually answer part of the question for you. You want them in the fold. You, you want them to sign up on your email list. A friend of mine, Ryan Stuman, wrote a book called How to Win Friends, no, uh, uh, Kick, Kick Ass, and take names, emails, and phone numbers. Your job as an author, or as a marketer, as a businessman, or woman, is to go ahead and, and grow your list, your audience, your media. If you wanna write a number one New York Times best-selling book, one of the only things the publishers are gonna to wanna to know is how big's your platform, which is a big, which is a fancy word for how many books can you sell on your own, homie? <laughs> how many people do you have on your email list? How many people are following you on LinkedIn? How many people are on your Twitter account? How many people are on your Facebook account? You are looking, and it is one thing to have followers, but it is another thing to have an email list and a phone number. You, when someone reads your book, you want them to sign up, man. I just bought a fictional book from one a, a great author. I can't remember what it is, and he did his own Kickstarter campaign, and I didn't buy his 
fourth, seventh, ninth audiobook, whatever one it was. I didn't buy it from Audible. I bought it from him because he emailed me and he said, hey, I'm doing this thing. And, da, 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 da. and then he made – he had the biggest – fiction book launch in history and one that was done on a Kickstarter and it was a self-published book because he understood the value of collecting my data and being able to send me information. Now that's the beginning. That's not the end, Robert. That's like, you know, you got to get a name and email and a phone number if you can, if you have the opportunity to give away a bonus in your book or just to incentivize and drop little seeds of awesomeness and say, hey, the way to solve global warming is go to my website and I'm going to hook you up. Like the way to go to my – Trevor hook you up is go to trevorcrane.com and I'll hook you up. <laughs> you, know? you can get something cool there and then I've got stuff to sell and then that's the back end. And I could go on and on about this. I told you at the beginning if you asked me a question, I'd go off. But this is good. We, you you dumped a lot of great info for us, and now we can kind of pick and choose what we want to to unpack here. So just to recap for people, those four questions, those four most essential, important, holy grail questions that you listed for us here is number one, who is the book for? Number two, what is it about? Number three, why do people care? And then number four, what's next? And what really uh, – I don't know, really hit home a lot for me when you were explaining some of that stuff was the part about from uh, the, the James Patterson masterclass where it's important to deliver what people want and to talk to people so that way you're not just writing in that vacuum, right? That way you're not just listing a bunch of facts or making the book that you want. You're delivering to the marketplace what people actually want. And what you're reminding me of is – uh, you know, like we we all go to networking events, conferences, or at least if we don't, we should. And for years and years, when I go to conferences, I tell people when they ask me what I did, I'd say membership sites, and they'd sort of perk up. And then uh, a few years passed, and then people didn't really perk up the same way that they used to. So I had to tweak things, right? I had to do a little bit of trial and error and mix up the conversation and see what made people excited and what made people lose interest. And I tried saying things like. Well, I make websites, but then that wasn't specific enough. Then I'd say, well, I do WordPress, but then that was too specific. And then these last couple of months at some of these networking events, I, I started saying, well, I make podcasts. I'm, I'll make your podcast. I'll, uh, I'll have you on my podcast. And for some reason, that made people perk up. Membership sites didn't do it as much. Websites didn't do it as much, and it might have been that that crowd, those events I was going to, but then I really took note of that, that there might be things that make me super interested, but what's more important is that these other people are interested, so that way I can speak to them, I can solve their problem, and you mentioned in there that how important it is to speak back to them in their language, that way you're not fighting that uphill battle, and then what also hit home for me quite a bit was your uh, your emphasis on having our own, our own platform, right? Because we can't just make the book and put it on Amazon and then say, hey, Amazon, send me some traffic. We have to send our own juice. But then what's great about this is, is it sounds like it's a, a repeat cycle, right? Because you can put out your books. You can have this enticing offer at the end. Uh, you can say, get my membership access, get my bonus videos, get whatever, and then they get on your list. And then when it comes time to promote the next books or the audio books or the Kickstarter campaign or whatever, you have your own email list, your own Twitter following, your own Facebook following. So it's like you're using the book to build this stuff up and then you're using the stuff you built up to sell more books. So I, I love it how you uh, laid it out here. Well, thank you, brother. And um, I, I just finished a book, an audio book from uh, an audio autobiography by Muhammad Ali called The Greatest and just finished it this morning, in fact. <clears throat> and I just recorded a podcast in my office right before we jumped on our session today about it and the lessons that I got out of it. And one of them was what a freaking phenomenal marketer and promoter he was. One of the reasons Muhammad Ali was the greatest is that he told the world he was the greatest. Like he, he lived, he had a dream of becoming the greatest, so he spoke it out loud and he told everybody he's the greatest. And then he had to live into that, live up to that and make, make that dream a reality. But it didn't, it didn't stop. 
It didn't stop when he was 22 and he won his first heavyweight champion title, uh, uh, heavyweight champion of the world. It didn't stop when he was 32 and he fought again. It, it didn't. It didn't stop. He never stopped marketing and promoting. And if he did, then he disappeared. And the challenge most authors have, the challenge most business people have, the challenge you and I have, brother, is obscurity. Nobody knows who the hell you are. Nobody knows who the hell I am. Now, granted, your audience is listening right now, and they're like, oh, my God, he's Robert Plank. He's so amazing. You know, maybe somebody knows my name, and they say the same thing, and I've got my own fans. <sighs> this is my fans. <sighs> There's two of them in the background. <sighs> so what our job as marketers is to tell the world that we exist. And one of the things, if I can give you a gift, brother, it's something that my wife coached me with. And I don't know. Uh, are you married, Robert? Yes. Okay. I've been married for about eight months. Oh, my God. Congratulations. Honeymoon Thank time. You. I'm guessing there's been no fights, nothing but loving in the oven. <laughs> yeah, <Who knows>? right. <laughs> so uh, so my, I'm not that coachable when it comes to me receiving help from my wife. You know, she, she wants – and vice versa. She doesn't really like my advice either. She wants me to just listen and I want her to tell me how great I am. <laughs> you know, so, but at one stage, she gave me some advice and it took me a couple of years to actually listen. There's something that she learned from one of her mentors and it took me a while to wrap my head around it. But, but what you might find, Robert, is oftentimes your wife is right even if you don't like it. And regardless of whether she's right, that you, it's better to just let her be right because then you're going to win. But um, this, this is what's called an audio logo. And it's something that my wife and I – my wife works with mostly female entrepreneurs and financial advisors who have the, uh, the challenge of – attracting uh, leads and doing their marketing to to stop chasing clients and then she helps them create uh, a branding and marketing that establishes their her authority and expertise to attract people to them that want to work with them and then she helps them grow their business and their income really fast she has a six month program that helps them do that now by the way I just used a little formula and that formula that describes who my wife works with and what she does is called an audio logo now, I didn't do it in the I am statement, so I could do that. And I'm going to give you the formula because you're a systems guy. And I know you're going to repeat it back to everyone because you're a freaking awesome systems guy and making sure that people get value from this. But I'm going to give you the phrase. Typically, I work with blank who have the challenge of blank and I help them achieve blank. Or the third part can be I typically I work with blank who have the challenge of blank and I help them create blank results. One, two, three. When you say typically I work with blank, you are now answering the question of who you work with and you can define it. I shared with you that my wife works with female entrepreneurs and I didn't say typically I use a different word. I say oftentimes or I said mostly I said mostly my wife works with female entrepreneurs. I said mostly. So now all the men listening now probably not for me but maybe for my wife or someone that I know and my, in fact when my wife will say this and the fear that oftentimes we have when we put out oh, I'm going to write a book for women. I'm going to I'm going to create an audio logo like this crazy dude Trevor said but then I'm going to be turning off half the people and I'm and I don't want to say no to anybody cuz I can help everyone. You can can't help everyone. Even Jesus, who did a pretty good job and was a nice guy by most people's reckoning, <laughs> did not, not everybody loved them. So not everybody's going to love you. And so, you know, it's, it's fine to say, and when you say mostly or typically I work with blank, you, you obviously you're leaving a little wiggle room so you can work with other people. My wife works with some men and oftentimes she will bring them into her world and then recommend yours truly to work with them because I have a program for uh, men and women. But my wife has actually more powerful marketing by niching down to typically I work with blank, which is what I mentioned before. Who should your book be for? Then the second part of the audio logo when you're at these conferences and events and you're saying instead of just saying websites, where membership sites, whatever, that's like saying I got pies, I got pizza. Are you a freaking – do you work at the, at, the, at the baseball park and you're like popcorn, Cracker Jacks, who's got some – we got cotton candy over here. Bullshit. <laughs> Talk. You're not a fucking barker, you know, and you're not. You, you obviously probably offer something more valuable than fucking popcorn. So go ahead and say, typically, my shit is good for this type of person who has this problem. Typically, I work with blank who have the problem of blank. Blank. Like typically, I work with business owners and entrepreneurs, doctors and lawyers, successful entrepreneurs. That's who I typically work with, Robert, who have the problem of creating leads on demand. 
establishing their expertise, credibility, who have the challenge of creating marketing and leads that can be on demand so they can get as many people as they want to work with them who beg to work with them. Now that's the result. I'm transform, transforming the problem into now the results that I help them deliver. So when I help my clients write a book, we go from blank page to bestseller in 90 days or less. Typically, my clients will market and promote themselves and add a minimum of 10 clients in the first 90 days of working with me and then they get their books done in a month and they create number one best selling books because they do so much marketing and promotion and they meet their mission and they make money from day one working with me. Because I help them create results from day one. I help them get clarity about that fourth question I gave you, what's next? What are you gonna sell? What's the kick it in? And I don't sell $10 shit. I mean, I do have some $10 stuff. You can go buy one of my books. They're 10 bucks or 20 bucks on Amazon. That's great. You can go buy it. It would be amazing. And I would love to have your, your two bucks commission that I get on that. It, 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 but that's nothing. My first book, Robert, was called High Paying Clients. I like to lead my clients into selling at least something over $1,000. Because if you sell 10 of those, you just made 10 grand. And it's going to take you a bit of time, money, energy, and effort to put good marketing out, create a good funnel out there, to create good YouTube videos, to find people to help you with your advertising and marketing, or to write a book. It's going to cost you more than 10 grand to do it well. Now, you can write a book on your own in your house, which would be like going into your backyard and being like, I'm all fucking fired up, and I'm going to, I'm going to build a house, man. I just went to Home Depot. I bought some wood, and, I'm going to, I'm, and I got a hammer, and I bought some nails, and I'm going to build some shit out in the backyard. Now, you might build a doghouse. You might build a birdhouse. You might build a fucking lean-to. You might build an outhouse. I don't know what you're going to build in your backyard, but it ain't the Taj Mahal. It ain't your dream house. Nothing you build in the backyard is going to end up in your dream house. It's not going to happen. You need an architect. So in answer to a previous question, you said, well, should, can, can, people, can people know how to do this on their own? Can they figure this out? And yeah, the question is, what's next? But if you are going to build your dream house and you you're good, man. You're an artist. And you pull out your own notepad and you draw it out. It's a kitchen table. And you're like, oh, it's going to be great. There's going to be a swimming pool. I'm going to make the bathrooms big. Hey, that is not, you can't give that to a, a contractor to build. You got to go to an architect. You got to go to the architect and say, yo, um, can, can, we, can we put this down on the, in the blueprint? Can you do that AutoCAD thing? And you could be a do-it-yourselfer. Ah, oh, fuck it. Like I, I can use Scrivener. I can get the new app. I can transcribe what I'm saying into a book. It would be amazing. I can go onto YouTube and figure shit out. You can't. And Robert, I just uh, shot another podcast, a video podcast of me being a complete dumbass. Okay, so <laughs> I will post podcasts where I've done stupid shit. And so I was doing stupid shit. I, my, my, uh, in my neighborhood said that my palm fronds, my, my palm trees outside my house, I live in Tampa, Florida, um, have too many dead palm fronds on them and I need to cut them off. And I told my yard guys, hey, can you cut those trees? And they're like, they're 30 feet in the air, dude. We don't do that. You got to call a tree company. And I was like, I can do that. Like, I'm not calling the freaking tree company. They're going to probably cost 200 bucks. They could cost me 500 bucks. I'm not going to do that. I will do it myself. Like many people think. I'll do my LinkedIn marketing myself, my Facebook marketing myself. I will, I will edit my own book. I will operate on my own brain. Okay, you can't. And I could. And I borrowed a ladder from my next door neighbor. And he's got one of those real cool extension ladders. And I put it up on the palm tree and I got one of those extendable saw things it's again from the neighbor borrowed it and it's got this little thing on it you can stand there so I'm outside and I'm thinking this will take me Robert 20 minutes like come on it's three palm trees a couple of dead and there weren't that many dead palm fronds on the thing and I'm a, I'm a guy man and I'm an entrepreneur and a, a man if it's gonna be it's up to me if I if it's gonna be done I can, I'm the man to do it and so I climbed up on this ladder and I'm dangling on the top rung of the ladder where they say don't climb on that's me I'm standing on that rung and it's leaning up against a tree or that's bridged between two trees, and I'm and I'm using my extension saw at the extended. It took me five and a half hours, and on three near death experiences, to cut down twenty palm fronds out of three trees. You can do this shit yourself, but the smarter thing is to get some help with the blueprint, with your audio logo, with what your book should be about, with getting all of your stuff done, with, in, with integrating the next level of your success in your marketing and in your business. My one piece of advice to any of my clients and anybody that I ever put uh, when I'm interviewed in any way, shape, or form, I'm like, man, what's your one secret? Fucking ask for help. Find out what you want. 
and 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 get focused and obsessed about it like Muhammad Ali was, man. I'm gonna be the greatest of all time. You know, I'm pretty. <laughs> Muhammad Ali, find out what you want, then get some help. Someone has beaten the path down before you. Even if you are Dorothy and you get carried away in uh, the tornado that uh, took her to Oz, and she's like, I just want to get home to Kansas. She came out in her little freaking high heel blue little thing when it was done uh, redone in Technicolor. <laughs> And she took her dog, Toto, and she said, how do I get home? And the little people showed up. See, I'm a mentor that helped people get shit done in their business and take their life and business to the next level and get their books done in 90 days or less and make them bestsellers and all that. But I'm nothing but the guide. The hero is the person that has the courage and the intelligence to ask for help, receive it, and then walk the golden brick road. There's a yellow brick road between here and where you want to go. There is an Emerald City. And along the path, you're going to need some help from uh, all those guys in that story. Was the um, the Scarecrow. Help me out, brother. Is the Scarecrow the... The uh, Tin Man. The Tin Man. The is, Lion. The Cowardly Lion. So along the path, there's a lot of people that you'll need on your team to help you. And if you get oh, off the path, man, it's going to take you away. You know, you're going to fall asleep in the field of poppies and there's lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. But there is a path. Find help. And I don't even know what the hell question you damn asked that I started going off on. Ah, oh, audio logo. Typically, I work with blank who have the problem of blank, and I help them create blank. And if you employ that, brother, that's my gift to you. In, in, and instead of just podcasting, what do people want from a podcast? Because I've been on a lot of podcasts, and you had told me that you've worked with a lot of authors. And oftentimes, the authors are starving authors. They're authors who created something magnificent or that they hoped was magnificent and they're painters, they're artists, and they created something that is brilliant and they got two reviews on Amazon or 20 and they don't know how to turn their book into the most powerful marketing tool and they don't know how to move this stuff forward. And you and I have the opportunity to help people and I, I really hope that you and your audience use this audio logo, get clear about the problems you solve, the results you deliver and figure out how to create a message and tell your story in a way that touches other people's hearts. And you said it, brother, you did it yourself. You were, you, at one point you, you, you barked out popcorn and then half the time it was like websites or memberships and they were like, holy shit. And they flocked to you. That's awesome. You know, people flock to the first, uh, what was that, uh, do, 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 when there's a new car design, they're like, oh, people flock over, and then pretty soon it's like they fucking see them all the time, and nobody gives a shit, and so you use good marketing. You you listened, and you saw the eyes glaze over and the people you're talking to, and you're like, eh, people aren't into this shit as much as they used to. I was running a Paracel business once, and, um, and I was the first guy that I knew of that had this yellow smiley face parachute that I bought from my designer, and he began giving me these awful rainbow-colored pastel things. I was like, dude, give me a yellow shoot with a black smiley face on it and have a red tongue hanging out the back of it. He goes, you know what, dude, you're the second, you're the only, you're the second person. Like just last month, I had someone in Hawaii do this. And I was so excited because I had a unique advantage on the beach. While all these other jackasses were out were flying around these parachutes with a fluorescent pastel, not fluorescent, they were totally pastel, bullshit colors. Mine was a yellow smiley face flying by the beach, and I'd fly it right by the beach with this gigantic, I'm talking gigantic, it was like 20, 30 feet long, like a cape, <laughs> flying out behind, would be this red tongue flying behind, and for about two months, maybe three, I had a strategic advantage, until all the bastards on the beach copied me, and so I paid it, and I was like, well, you know, uh, the, you know and, and Apple was the first one to come up with the touch screen phone and unless I'm mistaken maybe it wasn't but Android did it and they did it better right I mean I still use an iPhone because I think they're badass but let's face it I think the technology on the Androids are better they, they there's a better way to win the game although I don't know that Apple's losing by any stretch they're freaking phenomenal but um you got to listen to your audience and your your the name of the game in marketing or in your book or in promotion for those people who are trying to build a business and they just want to put things on autopilot and I want to create some of that automatic income. Bullshit. Think of Muhammad Ali, man, worked his ass off and never stopped working his ass off. And then when he had Parkinson's, he went back and he lit the torch at the Olympics in, 19, in 2016 record 10 or whatever it was when he did it and he just passed away in 2016 two years ago he worked his ass off and he never stopped and i think that that's 
again, something that will help your audience. Anyway, brother, yeah. I think you went a little past what you wanted to, but I, I can't stop myself. But that, that's okay. I, I feel like I need to drink maybe five or six pots of coffee just to catch up with you. I mean, I've I've been enjoying the, the one-man show, and it's definitely not meandering because you always found a way to circle back to the original point. But I didn't want to disrupt your flow here because you, you were making so many good points. And, one, and I mean, a, a bunch of things really jump out at me. I mean, one thing that, that really uh, hits home for me when you're talking about how important it is to do all the marketing and, you know, get some stuff set up and get that on autopilot. But while that's going then don't get behind the eight ball, right? Keep the other things going. That way you can stay on the cutting edge. What what it reminded me of was um, there's this guy, Pat Flynn, who teaches a lot of, you know, content marketing and stuff like that. And likewise with uh, people like you who, like, you know, teach how to uh, be an author and how to put books online. It's really easy to fall into that trap of saying, well, I'm just going to write every day. I'm just going to crank out another book every day. But what really hit home for me with some of these content marketing guys, the ones that do a really good job, is they say things like, well, spend 20% of your time making your content and then 80% of your time marketing it. I mean, just like how you're on the show right now, uh, right here, or how you do the video podcast or things like that. You're not just stuck in a room writing a book cranking out content you're always promoting because otherwise how the heck are people even going to know who you are so a really good reminder there and then as far as uh trying to build a whole house yourself with just a hammer without any tools without having a plan without other people helping you i mean it's the way that you describe it it's a crazy way of doing business but so many people are guilty of that right i mean uh when i was growing up as a kid my dad would always tweak the the car and the house and the electrical system was always weird and i thought that he was a really smart guy because he was doing everything himself fixing everything in, in the house himself until i became old enough to ride a bike and i was riding the bike one day and i squeezed the brakes and I didn't have any brakes on, on the bike. He had them adjusted too much where I had to like really pull them, really, hold them really hard. And I couldn't even break the bike. I had to like put my feet on the ground and like almost, almost kill myself. And then a couple of days later, he adjusted the bike again and I was riding. And I was, and I was going down a hill and I was like, okay, I really, I'm going to grab these brakes really hard. I'm going to grab both the front and the back brake. And I grabbed them and he had them adjusted too much the other way and it threw me across the, the handlebars. So <laughs> if, you, if you're just flying by the seat of your pants, if you don't know what you're doing, that might get you started. That might be fun for a little while, but long term, that's crazy. Like you said, you can build the little the little dog house, but to actually build a house that you can live in, that's actually working, that's going to sustain you. I mean, it's crazy to do it without a plan and without a mentor and without a system like you're describing. And without and a then, team. Yeah. You know, yeah. who's living in a house right now that they build themselves? With, with, you know, I mean, come on, maybe there's some freaking no, no, nobody listening to today's show built their house themselves without freaking any help. It just didn't happen. And we right. think they can do it with their book marketing funnel, whatever. Go ahead, Robert. And even if they did, I mean, how many years would that have taken, right? I mean, if you ha if you had a team of, of people to build the Brooklyn Bridge, I mean, would that take a few months? But if there was one guy doing it, how many centuries would that take just one person doing it? So, I mean, it's like quite quite a bit of difference in the speed just from having multiple people, people working on that. And then as far as that audio logo, I really love that because you've you made a couple of adjustments to that. I think we've all heard like some form of that, but not quite as developed of that as, as you alluded to. I struggled for a while with the, the keyword problem, right? Of just like shouting out the keywords and then saying, well, now I have to maybe say more than just WordPress or say more than just the website and make it more about them. And and I've heard of it put and, I, and I've used it in this context of saying, you know, I, I help blank do blank. But then what you've done is you said not only that part, but you said, I typically help this kind of person. So that way you're not necessarily limiting yourself, but then you're also put in the the problem you're solving in the middle. And I can't believe I, I missed that uh, in, in putting this to practice. So you say, I typically work with this audience who have this challenge and I help them solve that problem. So that way mm -hmm. you're not just jumping to the solution. That way you're explaining the problem that gets solved. That way they can relate to it. They can say that's for me. I mean, this is all really great stuff. And you've alluded to a few times that you help people with this 90-day process, that if people 
are are struggling with their books or if they want a book or whatever the situation, you can get them to that that book in a month and then in 90 days or less, you get them to 10 clients. So can you explain about what is what sort of solution it is that you have here and what kind of resources or books or websites you want to throw out to us today? Hmm. Love that. That was the, that was the lobbing up the ball to me to knock it out of the park. So, um, so I'm, I'll give everybody uh, a gift today. I'll give you two because, well, you know, a, I'll just I'll just throw one out there. So I think everybody should make big money with their book. Uh, one of the books that I wrote recently, was, I think I published it last year, is called Big Money with Your Book, without selling a single copy. And the how I help people make money with their book is I don't wait for the book to get done to start marketing it and promoting it. What we didn't talk about, Robert, is we bragged on my 11 books, but um, I didn't publish my first book till I was over 40. And uh, I, I struggled and failed to publish a book for 20 years, 20 years of writing every day. And, and, and deluding myself that my ideas and my time that I spent on a weekend or early morning or late at night when I have the discipline to write every day and write my story and to, to capture some of my thoughts and to record my story or stories into uh, the, the microphone or video or whatever. And then I transcribe all that crap. All of that was it felt good. It felt good and it felt like I was making progress. And actually, Robert, I could brag to people about it and say, I'm working on my book. What'd you do this weekend? I'm working on my book. <laughs> working on my book. And it feels really good. But you know what else feels really good, brother? Masturbation. I mean, it feels really good. But it doesn't make babies. You know, <laughs> you know it, but it feels good. And I, I'm all for it, man. Masturbate all you want. But don't confuse masturbation with making babies. <laughs> and that's the thing is that people get inspired. They're like, I, I believe that guy. I should write myself a book, which was me. People were like, Trevor, you're amazing. You should write a book about this. You should write a book about that. Or I got all fired up because I'm going to write a book about this or write a book about that. But if you're going to get something done, you know, it is best to find someone, a guide who's been there before and get some help and seek some advice. And I launched my second season of my podcast, Greatness Quest. I launched on the Grant Cardone network when Grant first started Grant Cardone TV. And at the time he was calling it uh, – what the whatever it takes network and I had a show on there and so did my wife. My show is called Greatness Quest. My wife was called uh, the Financial G Spot because <laughs> she works with mostly financial advisors and a lot of people in the financial advisory industry. And so she called it the Financial G Spot. Mine was called uh, Greatness Quest. And I'd met Grant and he interviewed me on his Power Players podcast or TV show. And he interviewed my wife a, a little while later and we were talking about. It. And I said, Hey, what's what makes a show a success? And he said, here's what my advice to you. And uh, I'm guessing you know who Grant Cardone is, brother? Oh, yeah. love him. Yeah, love Grant. So um, and he goes, here's my advice. He goes, most people put most of their energy into creation and very little energy into promotion. And he said, I've done the same thing. He goes, I will have my whole video crew and we'll do all this editing and all this crap. And he goes, and we'll put together some great videos. He goes, but sometimes the video that I make on my iPhone sitting outside, you know, smoking a cigar, it gets just as much attention as the ones that are all highly produced and performed. He's like, what I would highly advise you do is put 10% of your energy into creation and the 90% into promotion. So the secret sauce that I use in me to give everybody my book called uh, Big Money With Your Book Without Selling a Single Copy is that it's about promotion. I help people from day one start marketing their book and their message and I get and I help them answer the question of what are they going to sell and offer to help them meet their mission and make some money at the beginning on conversation number one I help my clients with a blueprint that they're going to be proud of and the blueprint includes how they're going to build how they're going to promote how they're going to market what they're going to sell to whom and then they go out and they sell it so I scare the shit out of some people Robert because what they want to do is masturbate because it feels good and they want to do is they want to write and I just want to create this amazing book and it's about marshmallows or Martians or money or Mississippi or Mars or whatever it is that they want to write about. And they don't want to market. I don't want to tell anybody yet. Shh, don't tell anybody. I'm writing a book, but don't, don't tell anybody. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to do any marketing yet because I, I, I don't know what the cover is going to be. I, I haven't finished it. Bull loney. What you need to start with is marketing and monetization. And then when people give you money for to solve problems and create results, now you've got a real measure 
Not like when you tell people, hey, I'm going to write a book about this. It's going to be great. Hey, I'm going to do some marketing about this. What do you think? Shh, don't tell anybody, but I'm just testing it. What do you think? And people will, if they love you, they'll either t- they'll either try to protect you and tell you not to do it because they're scared for you, or they're going to blow smoke up your skirt and tell you how amazing it is, especially if they're trying to sell you something. Holy shit. Like, that's dangerous. Don't go to somebody who's trying to sell you something and ask them whether or not they think your idea is good. Like go to a, tell, go to a publisher <laughs> or a hybrid publisher who's trying to get your business to help them publish a book and you'll tell them about their idea. And dude, one thing you can do to get people excited is get them talking about what they think is cool. So they'll go ahead and go, oh, tell me about your idea. And I know people, uh, publishers, that'll go to these events, conferences, spend their money to get there and they're like, we're looking for new authors. And they'll say, tell me about your idea, Robert. And they tell them about their idea. And they're like, marshmallows and it's going to be great and it's going to be called Marshmallow World. And they're like, oh my God, tell me more. And they blow smoke up their skirt telling them how great their freaking idea is. What bullshit. They only care about getting the client. And that's not exactly accurate, but let's just look at it. They care. They're wanting to humor you. You see, I know that everybody listening right now is an amazing story. That's why are we even talking about it? It means nothing. You have an amazing fucking story and it should be told. Yes. I don't need to, at the first time I'm interviewing you or talking to you or trying to help you, tell you how amazing it is. Because it's either awesome now or it'll be awesome later. Because if it's not awesome yet, we're going to make it freaking awesome. So that it sings and it guarantees people love your shit. Why? Because we test it. Not because I go ahead and see it and think, oh my God, that's amazing. Or someone else says, oh my God, that sucks. Because I am not your reader or audience or core person. Probably Neither are you, Robert, and neither is that dude who's the publisher. They are just interested in in their best interest, and it is, and they're probably doing the best they can. Blowing smoke up your skirt is what they've been told to do. <gasps> oh, my God, that sounds amazing. I would love to tell that story. That could be a movie. Whatever. They'll align with you and tell you what great your freaking idea is. Where Grant Cardone said, do some promotion, not spending all that time on creation. So the formula, because that's what you asked for, is I spend my, I get clear about, help my clients get clear about what's next first and who first. And this throws people for a loop because oftentimes people don't want to tell anybody that they're doing shit. Not until they have enough proof from the outside world and they get permission that I can market and sell. Because I don't know. I need somebody to give me the authority and certification and approval that this is okay. And as a publisher and architect to help people craft a message that matters to their core market that makes money and meets their mission. Ooh, look at this and all those M words that just showed up. That was really cool. <laughs> so do the math. You know, I will give people permission to move forward. And I don't do it because I guarantee their freaking success. I don't guarantee that their stupid idea is going to be an amazing idea that's going to craft their audience. I say we're going to keep going until we find the right one. Robert, when I finally published my first book, it's not because I finally got the epiphany, woke up in the middle of the night, and Jesus came down to me and just gave me the, this is it. I hired a mentor. I swallowed my pride. I realized that after 20 years of failure, I needed some freaking help. And then I went out and I got help and I hired somebody and I asked him, hey, this is my idea for my first book. What do you think? And instead of telling me I think it's great or I think it sucks and knocking my dick in the dirt or telling me how amazing it was and blowing smoke up my skirt, he went ahead and asked me questions. And I was able to define. I'm like, holy shit, this book is confusing. The message is confusing. It doesn't really make sense. Nobody understands. Who is it for? I don't even fucking know. And, and, and how does this even represent my brand? And what am I going to sell? Nothing. That's what I'm going to do. Nothing. I'm like, oh, shit. I put all this time, energy, and masturbation into something that is not going to give me any result. Shit. So then I came to up with my next idea that I thought was awesome. This one's great. My grandfather passed away and he gave me his last message in the void. Blah, 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 blah. I told him my fucking story. And instead of telling me how great it was or telling me how much it sucked, he asked me questions. Tell me figure it out. And I realized that, again, my second idea, my third idea sucked. Not sucked. They were good, but they were out of context. And I did, they weren't what I needed to write about first. My first book called High Paying Clients, which is my second gift to everybody. Oh, did I give the first one away? My first book uh, is called, uh, that I'm going to give away. Trevor, go to trevorcrane.com forward slash big money. If you go to trevorcrane.com forward slash big money, you'll get my book about how to make big money with your book without selling your freaking book. By using it as a tool to get to open up people's wallets and help them and solve problems and deliver results and money is nothing but a measure of how much greatness and goodness and and contribution that you give others. So it's a privilege and an honor to receive money and you, it's your moral duty and responsibility to go get big money so you make a bigger impact. 
So go to trevorcrane.com forward slash big money to get my big money book for free. If you go to trevorcrane.com forward slash free book, you'll get my first book I ever wrote called High Paying Clients. That was my first book. And it was the right book. And I wrote that book. It was the right book for me because what I do best, and definitely what I did best at the time, was helping my clients craft a high ticket offer, was helping my clients attract people that wanted to pay big money and high ticket stuff and buy your high ticket products and programs, attract and convert. That book is about selling high ticket products and programs. And I wrote that book, Robert, in 24 hours. I wrote it in 24 hours because I, I had that content in my heart and it scared the shit out of me, brother, because it was my best stuff. And so people had paid me the most money for. I'd gotten high five and six figure contracts from people giving me money to tell them. To, and I put all my secrets in that book and you guys can get it by going to trevorcrane.com forward slash free book. And yeah, um, uh, for free, and I, I pay for shipping on that, so it's going to cost me money. So not only in my marketing am I willing to go ahead and give shit away for free, excuse me, uh, am I willing to give stuff away for free, but I'm willing to pay for the privilege of getting my message in front of you, I will pay for the shipping of that book to you. And if you don't want me to ship you the book because you're like, ah, oh, man, it's one of those free plus shipping funnels, send me an email. <laughs> Go to trevorcrane.com, find my email address, send me an email and say, I want the ebook. I'll send you the, the, the digital version. I don't care. But go get big money with your book by going to that website and the one for my free book. Go to trevorcrane.com forward slash free book. And uh, that's it. I'm not going to give you more away because that's going to be plenty, brother. But um, did I answer your question? I think I went off on another weird ass tangent. You, you did, but weird ass tangents are good. That's what I live for. And, uh, I, you know, we went a little bit over time, but. As long as we're having fun, as long as I'm even learning stuff and taking notes, I think that as long as we're on a roll, I'm 100% okay with it. Not going to shut you down if we're having a good time. So, so yeah, you did answer the question, which was how can people find out more about you and get some cool stuff? And your answer was trevorcrane.com forward slash big money to get that big money with your book without selling a single copy. And then trevorcrane.com forward slash free book to get the high paying clients book. Like like you said, free plus shipping offer, but if people don't even care about their future enough to pay a little bit of money to get the, the free book sent to them in the mail, then they can contact you and get that uh, that PDF sent to them. But I mean, pay the, that little bit of money to figure out what the heck you need to do to stop masturbating, like you said, right? I, I'm going to have some trouble getting that image out of my head there, but <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's a little gross, but maybe stop people need something... Mirror. <laughs> there we go. But maybe people, maybe people need something drastic like that to wake them up. That if if you think that you're just going to be hiding in your home office somewhere and you're going to be cranking out that book, and you know what? Someday, maybe in the next five or ten years, once the book's done and shiny, then I'll show one person to it and they'll love it and it'll blow up. I mean, you, you can't live with that sort of disconnect, right? You're only kidding yourself if you're if you're not at the point yet where you can break out of your shell and you can't market yourself, then you need to get to that point as quickly as possible. And having the book done in a vacuum might be the creation of a book that nobody wants. So it has to be a process. You have to be marketing yourself. You have to be figuring out what people want. You have to be promoting yourself because it's not just going to happen magically once the book is done. You need to promote yourself. You need to do all these marketing things. Otherwise, you'll be the uh, the the least known genius out there, right? So you need to go to trevorcrane.com forward slash big money to get that big money book and then trevorcrane.com forward slash free book to get that high paying clients book so go there right now and grab it and then after you've done that then make sure that you subscribe to Trevor and his podcast because I mean I, I had a lot of fun and I really enjoy when people have a big huge uh, personality and, and are authentic which it sounds like you are so I think that people need to check out what you have going on these two books and listen to everything that you have to say because it seems like and it sounds like that you're you're living your true self and you're not afraid to just be honest with people and tell people the non-sugar-coated truth. Like you said, sometimes it's easy to butter up a potential client because that way you'll maybe you'll land someone to, to buy a bunch of books. But you're saying, I'm going to be real with you. I'm right there with you on the journey. I want to make sure that you sell as many books as possible and have and get your message out 
and have the best life. So trevorcrane.com slash big money and trevorcrane.com slash free book. So Trevor, I know that you're a talker. So as we're winding things down and closing things up here, do you have anything to say just to kind of wrap up this whole conversation we're having here? Hmm. Uh, just two, brother, uh, two, two things. So first of all, thank you for having me. Thank you for your guests for listening. And please take something that you liked here and apply it. Uh, if you didn't like something I said, then throw that stuff out and keep the stuff that's relevant to you so that you can uh, take some action and, um, and, and create some new results in your life. And I already gave you my two cents and like 17 different points I delivered on this on this show so the only other thing I'll give you is just um, if you didn't like my masturbation example and you're like even cringing when I'm saying it and, and I don't want you to think of me when you're masturbating. <laughs> oh, no, no. Don't think of a pink elephant. <laughs> think of uh, you can use the analogy of singing in the shower. A lot of times people fall into the create the creation part, part of the process and it is fun and it is important and and it is uh, it. And your your message needs to sing, and it needs to be an amazing one, and it does take energy and effort, and you should put the time into it. But make sure you're not only singing in the shower. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna try to to belt out the R S B C T, tell me what you mean to me, then do it in the real world. You know, I believe I can fly. Don't do it quietly or in the shower and bark it out, and not be willing to do it on a freaking podcast. Because if that wasn't the worst karaoke, not even karaoke, acapella, Aretha Franklin. And whoever wrote I Believe I Can Fly, I, hope, I don't remember that dude's name, R.J. Kelly, well, I can't remember. But uh, th- that's got to be the worst ever. So just don't be singing in the shower. Choose, you know, have the courage. I think I saw Jim Carrey give a commencement speech to, uh, oh, God, it was this great video. You guys should look it up on YouTube and watch his commencement speech at some university. If you do a search for it, you can find it. But he says, dare to be uh, to be heard and liked or not liked, and I'm, I'm screwing up the quote here. But uh, go watch that uh, that uh, video with Jim Carrey doing the commencement address, and you'll find so many pieces of value there. But basically, is like dare to be seen. That was what is what it was. He said, "Dare to be seen. Dare to be seen. You're not going to make everybody happy. You're you're by 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 a long stretch." <laughs> So there are some people that are going to absolutely say that your stuff sucks. There are going to be haters. There are going to be people that don't like your marketing, your message. They're not going to like your singing, and that's okay. In fact, that is desired. If all you do is try to stay within the lines and make everybody happy, you will lose. So to have the courage, stick your head up and go out and get some. I love it. So put yourself out there and be polarizing. So thanks for hopping on the show, brother, to use your term. And people should go to trevorcrane.com slash big money and trevorcrane.com slash free book. And we'll see you there. And thanks, Trevor, for hopping on the show. We really appreciate you listening to today's episode of Marketer of the Day. Subscribe to us on iTunes and rate and review us at marketerofthedaycom iTunes.